Lounge and Sun. Welcome back to another episode of the Comic Lounge Podcast. My name's Ryan, and I got my co-host Dylan with me. How's it going, guys? And today we're going to be talking about a book that I'm pretty sure almost every single person I know that's into comics has read, and that's Saga Volume 1. Kind I've of read this volume to... one like maybe like seven times. I know. Since I know. I, since <laughs> I purchased it, I actually just recently just recently started a reread. Like I'm actually on like seven right now or eight right now or something. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I want to do a reread, but I want to wait until closer to when they announce that it's coming back. Yeah, you know. So I'll just save nine for that. That's what I'll do. <laughs> Bottom line is, like, I, everybody's read it, right? So many people yeah. have read it. I mean, I still, at the shop, I can still recommend it to people because there are yeah. people that haven't read it yet, shockingly enough. I sold, they- I sold three volumes at work on uh, Wednesday. No, because she, she already had one through four, and I told her, uh, she, she wanted to pick up five, but it was, like, behind all the books because that's where we keep our overstock, but, like, because our, our uh, shelves are extra wide so we can put stuff behind it in case we need to restock and five was back there and I asked her like oh is this your first read through and she's like yeah it's like ooh <laughs> like, like my first initial reaction was like ooh like you know I, I hand her five and I'm like this is gonna wreck you and she's like oh, should I just pick up six and seven now I'm like yeah <laughs> and she's like okay sold I'm like nice it's a good story dude it's so accessible to everyone it's funny because I think I talked about it like well, like a couple months ago on the podcast that mm. somebody had come in, they had it read Saga, and I I proceeded to describe the series, and he's like, oh man, like, and how many volumes are out? And I was like, oh, there's nine. I ended up selling him the compendium. Nice. Like, the dude nice had not it. even read it, and he bought the compendium. Like, I felt like that was a huge one, but I think the thing I've Oof. sold the most... The thing I sold the most would probably be Batman Long Halloween, actually, I think, is the, if I counted, like, actually how many copies of it, you know? Yeah, yeah. Of, like, a single volume. Saga, I've sold a lot, um, but that's, like, if somebody comes in and they've already started, I don't really count that, you know? I sell a lot of X-Men books, just various X-Men books. Oh, and I I, I sold House (laughs) of Powers, too. So I explained, he's like, oh, man, Marvel hasn't really been good in a long time, and... I already said I haven't been reading Marvel in a long time, and last time I read, like, there wasn't really that much good going on, and he told me about, like, the X-Men, you know, uh, Gold and Blue, and I was like, oh, that's garbage. And I was like, I started telling him about House of Powers, I was like, this is the best book Marvel's publishing. And I told him a little bit about it, but not too much, and yeah. he bought the hardcover. <laughs> I was like, God yeah, damn, dude. dude. You know? I want to reread that hardcover. That was, such, that was a good ride. It was. Um, but yeah. hey, we're here for we're here for Saga. But um, before we get into it, uh, I know that we had discussed stuff that we've been reading lately, and you just caught up on Daredevil. Yes. Yeah, by Chip Zdarsky, and am I? I don't know if I'm pronouncing his last uh, his last name, but but Macheco, Machesso, Macheco, <laughs> the oh, artist, uh, Marco Chichetto or something. Chichetto, like that? Yeah. yeah. But oh, and uh, man. First things first, like, you already know. Like, whenever I'm going to talk about anything, I'm going to talk about the art first. Because, obviously, I love art. Like, mm-hmm. uh, for those of you who listen but don't uh, don't follow my page, I, I you know, I, I try drawing. I try to do it. And you don't I'm try. Okay. You're very good at it. You're very good at it. Don't sell yourself short. You're very good. Anyway. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, so I'm always going to comment on the art first. Art is always going to be my thing. Um, if there's something about art that's off-putting, like, I'll definitely let it be known. Anyway, so... Daredevil, this easy, art easily has to be one of the most fitting art for, uh, like, you know, art styles that I've seen for Daredevil. Uh, I don't know, like, something about it is just, like, you know, everything's proportionate, but it's very alive, very, very kinetic, even though it's uh, more on the proportionate side, as opposed to more, a, more of a stylized side, more, more stylized and, like, bombastic. But this, mm-hmm. man, oh, the Daredevil design is dope. I like how he's wearing pants. Yes. <laughs> Yes, yeah, that's what know. I was just about to say. I was just, you were literally as you were talking about the art. I was thinking yeah. about the design of the costume and how it kind of looks. It's more realistic, almost. It's more, you know? more, more tactical, and yeah. it's like you know, it's not just some guy in a red suit just like running around in tighties. He, it's just like you know, he's like wearing. It's like he's like wearing a body, up, uh, an upper body suit, and some combat band, combat boots mm-hmm. and pants. It's great. Looks good, and I like the whole stringiness. How he. Uh, 
change the gloves out for like uh, wraps. That's dope. Yeah, <laughs> that's freaking awesome. <laughs> and and like the fact that you know Daredevil, like pretty much throughout this run, doesn't even put the put the suit back on until like you know the more recent issues. The more let's say have passed like three or four issues, he finally put it back on. Yeah, and like the fact that oh man, I don't even want to get into it too much without like ruining it. I mean, go ahead. I, I did a whole episode with Mario. We completely oh. ruined all of Daredevil. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's say okay, so you know, for for those for, for, the, for the listeners who know, like Daredevil incorporates a lot of Catholic guilt and a lot of religion into his storylines because you know it, it, he's Catholic, so it plays a major role in who he is, how he was raised, and you know the superhero, he, the hero he tries to be, right? In so, every in run, the, by the way. In every run. Every yeah. run. And I was getting a little tired of the trope. I'm not going to lie. But the way this was approached was it felt natural at the same time feeling very different than the normal kind of, like, Daredevil story. It was just so good. It was yeah, everything I, about it. It's huh. fantastic. You know, I'm so, I'm, I can't even tell you how excited I was when you told me that you caught up because, like, I, I've said this before, and... Daredevil is one of my favorite characters. I hate to say this, but he might even be my favorite Marvel character. And hey, I love, I, I, I love respect Spider- that answer. And I love I respect Spider-Man. the hell out of the answer. I love Spidey. You know what I mean? But like, I've just connected more with Daredevil run stories over the years as opposed to Spider Man. And mm-hmm. that's a testament to like the type of creators that are put on these books. I mean, you have runs by Frank Miller. You have car- creators like uh, John Romita Jr., mm-hmm. Michael De- uh, Brian Michael Bendis, Ed Brubaker, mm-hmm. uh, Charles Sewell, Andy Diggle. I mean, like, well, Andy Diggle's Kevin run. Kevin Smith. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Mark Wade. Ch- the only runs I don't really care for are the ch- – the. it's mostly the Andy Diggle, the Shadowland stuff, which I yeah. felt like um, – I'll just be honest – I think it was uh, just poorly executed, in my opinion. Yeah, I think it, it, it was a cool was concept. Good. Yeah. And <laughs> like, then, you know, him being the head of the, 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 the freaking the palm of the hand, bro, like, that was right. dope. Right. <laughs> and then the Charles Sewell stuff, which it had its moments, but overall, I wouldn't say it's one of my favorites. But nonetheless, Daredevil is fantastic. And I had been waiting for you to get on board with it. And I mean, it's so good, dude, because, like, it is really, this, really good. For anybody listening that hasn't read it yet, I, I do want to kind of give you some a little context. So at the end of the last Daredevil run, he has a near-death experience, right? So his his radar senses are off, and he accidentally kills someone, which is why he's out of the costume. Yeah. And, you know, that's why we don't see him in, in the costume for a majority of the run. There's a scene, one of my favorite scenes of this run is when Spidey comes over and tells him, you can't be Daredevil anymore. You got this, well, oh, wait, wait. Also, oh, so check it out. The Spider-Man in this Daredevil run is the Spider-Man that I want to see. Yes. Like, yeah. so this is, this is, this just further is like solidifies what we were talking about yeah. um, a couple weeks back with, uh, um, with Mario. Yeah, with Mario. Sorry. <laughs> with Mario. Yeah. And uh, how friggin' I would love to see Zdarsky do a Spider-Man run. Same. I think it would sell well. I think he would tap into some old some old core peter parker you know yeah but anyway yeah. continue sorry Ryan. so no it's all good and uh but i have to say dude some of the best stories storylines or like subplots have been the kingpin stuff yes i mean oh man i mean oh, like man. Yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah 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 like i just wanted to i, I just wanted to throw that out there because i want to hear your opinion i've already given my opinion about this stuff on that daredevil um episode i did on the youtube channel but Dude, I want to hear your thoughts on that. So, you know, okay, so how basically how he's written, you know, he's the mayor now. So he basically uh, relieves himself of the position of kingpin. And he divides whatever whatever crime holdings he has amongst the, the leftover families that's still doing the crime. But that, and that includes the owl, uh, freaking Owlsley. By the way, his character design in this. I know. <laughs> I know. Fantastic. Yeah, fantastic. If you guys like would Google like what the owl looked like back in like the sixties or yeah. the in the, or the seventies or whatever. Oh <laughs> man, he he Daredevil had some of the campiest of camp 
freaking villains. The porcupine is one of them, and the Stilt, owl is... Hey, what about, what about Stilt Man? Stilt... <laughs> Wait, let's talk about Stilt Man, too. Stilt Man's character design in this was dope, too. Yeah. Like, this, I, I absolutely loved it. There was a lot of, uh, there was a lot of Daredevil rogues we haven't seen in a while, like Crossbones and uh, freaking... Like, it, it was good, dude. It was... This was good. Z- Darcy knows what he's doing. And anyway, so back to the kingpin. He, he So he divvies up, whatever, and then he goes on to be a mayor because he wants to make the power plays as mayor. He's, he wants, he's playing this game now. He's done with the crime game. He's going into politics. There's this whole subplot where it's basically showing Wilson Fisk trying to immerse himself in the world of politics, but not really knowing how vicious that shit is because the Stormwinds, Stormwinds, all this oh, super crazy, all-powerful, friggin' political family is, like, what he is, the people he needs to get in bed with. Well, yeah, but, they're, they're like, the wealthy people that, like, he was, he was rich, right, as a crime lord, but this is, like, these people control the world, kind of. They don't just control yeah. New York or Hell's Kitchen, like, they're running the world, and, and I think, like, watching him, like... Um, they're the 1% of the 1%. Him getting put in his place by them is just, like, so, some of those scenes are just, like, holy shit, dude. Like, you never see Kingpin like that. It, it's this level of, like, vulnerability that, like, doesn't get displayed much. But how he reacts to it, I mean, aside from the little outburst of rage, how he reacts to it after that, how he, like, finally adapts and becomes the game. Oh, man, that, that's some freaking class A writing. Give me more Wilson Fisk stories. You read the newest issue, right? Yeah. 23, the, the other Spidey issue? Yeah, yeah. yeah. The so, best Spidey like, issue? Yeah, I mean, dude, it's... So all the feels, bro. I know, I know. It was it was my favorite book that came out that week. I, and I think it's been a couple weeks since it came out. But hands down, it was, like, one of my favorite issues of the series. And, yeah, I'm just so glad you're, you're caught up. And... It's great. I'm excited for it every time it comes out now. I don't even care. It's throughout that, throughout whole, that whole 23 issue read that I did. There was not a single issue where I was like, oh, this one's bad. This one feels like a filler because it yeah. didn't. Every single issue is it's gold. There's really human moments in, in this entire run that, like, that Daredevil is synonymous for. You want to get to the root of Daredevil, Daredevil, you want to write a good Daredevil story, you get to his, humans, his human part, him mm-hmm. trying to fight off the devil. And it's, like, the best. Yeah. And then, I, and then we had a little bit of Electra in there. With yeah. Jorge Fournay guesting on art. I mean, dude, yeah, this run is just... Like, I hope that this is going to go for a while. I mean, I don't see, like... It doesn't seem like there's any um, end in sight. But yeah. I do hope that we get to continue to read this for some time. And that he continues to put Spidey in there. But another run that I'm really glad that you caught up on... <laughs> Immortal <laughs> Hulk, bro. About it. I have been waiting. I have been waiting for you to read this fucking book, dude. And Ooh. dude, I like how you never pressure me. You kind of like just let me like do my thing and find my way into these things. Yeah, like I love that shit. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, because I know eventually, I know you listen to me, but like I don't want to like pester either. You know what I mean? Like, because I feel like if I were to like annoy you, you would read it. You'd be reading it as a chore almost. Like, oh fuck, fine, I'll just read this fucking book. You know, and it mm-hmm. might take away some of the joy. But yeah, no, this is this is. It's fantastic, okay. dude. I did not like Hulk comics. Like, I'm sorry. Like, I I've only read I've only, I've only read two two Hulk stories, and that's Planet Hulk and World War Hulk. Same. That's it. That's Same. it. And then that's I, it. I'll be honest. I did read some uh, Marvel Knights um, by Bruce Jones that mm-hmm. came out. I think when we were in high school, I think is when that was coming out, and that was oh, wow. okay. But I forgot it, and you know, I don't really remember it. But it yeah. kind of leaned into the horror aspect yeah. as well. But this. Al Ewing and Joe Bennett, dude. This shit, bro. It's Look. insane. It's insane. Okay, I'm not caught up. I'm, I'm, I just started Volume Six, so the Roxxon story arc. Oh my god, dude. Yeah, I just got to the Roxxon story arc, and this fool Dario Auger. I fucking this fool. I want to punch this fool in the face. I know. He's, I know. He's like one of those. He's like Joffrey. He is. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Yes, he is. I fucking, fucking hate that guy. He's fucking jo- Joffrey freaking uh, Baratheon. Yeah. I just want to punch him in the face. Yeah. But anyway, I digress. I love horror freaking comic books. I love horror comic books. So yeah. the first horror comic book I, I actually read was an actually an American comic. I, I was thinking about it today because I, it couldn't have been Swamp Thing. 
it's this uh, horror comic series from the Philippines. It's called Shake, Rattle, and Roll. All, all their storylines are focused on the Philippines, so mostly rural areas. So like a lot of jungle, a lot of plants, and a lot of like you know vibrant colors. But it was like a, a, a comic book that was published in like the late '80s, early '90s. So it was really bad, especially coming from the Philippines. But these things, they're, they're, man, like these are the comics that freaking sparked it, like the whole love for the horror genre. Especially like uh, with uh, titles like Creep Show and you know Swamp Thing with like Len Wayne and Sin just doing their thing, and then later on Alan Moore. Like I love freaking monsters. Like, give me all the monsters. Like like I haven't read it yet, but I heard Werewolf by Night is actually a pretty decent comic. The one with Taboo and uh, what's the name? Yeah, uh, Benjamin Jackendoff. This this is different. This. There's just so many different elements of like horror in this that's not just like your everyday monster movie. It's like classic, it's a Universal Studios monsters, but Marvel characters and extremely grotesque. And it's, it's, the, most, it's, it's the most fun I've had in a long time. And the most fun I've definitely had in a Hulk run. The, the story itself evolves from arc to arc almost so naturally that it's it's hard to believe that these are different story arcs like broken up into different volumes. Like, you know what I mean? It, it, it feels so cohesive. This is going to be a fantastic omnibus for whoever picks it up. That's all I'm saying. Like, yeah. it's so good, dude. Especially later on with like, you know, the abomination and Betty. Oh man. And the absorbing man and going to hell, bro, bro. Yeah. <laughs> I know it's, it's, it's not even something you would think about. In in a Hulk book, you know, it's yeah, like... he's he, he's touching on all these all these like crazy aspects at the same time while quoting some of like the craziest quotes about monsters and the dark and nighttime and like from oh it's yeah and, it's, and, and it's it's so it's so freaking smart too just like I love how he really is completely utilizing the whole uh, dis the the displaced personality identity disorder right is that what it's called. Disassociated I, Identity Disorder, yeah, I where so. he basically has split personalities. I might be wrong. Please, if someone, please someone correct me. But anyway, he has that, and I love how each Hulk makes an appearance, except for, you know, Doc Green and one more. I forget. But it's so good. It's so good where I'm at right now. I can't oh, yeah. even. I can't even oh, believe. Like, just wait, bro. Just wait till you get to caught up. It's <sighs> like, let me tell you something. I'll give you a little story about about my experience with this title. So, I picked up issue one, Tim, because I heard it was good, and then I ended up selling it because it was getting hot. I, and I'm like, you know what? I while I really like this book, like this book's not going to get any more valuable than it is right now. So I should just I should. So just you make... thought it peaked? Yeah, and <laughs> I and I'm like, fuck. And, well, and, it, and I was like, you know what? I'll just get, read it in trade, right? Because like I, I had so many titles on my pull. It was one of those weeks where I had not a lot, and I'm like, you know, what? let me pick this up real quick. It, it blew me away. I'm like, what a fucking amazing first issue! Like this is, it was so unlike anything I had ever experienced with Hulk. And then I sold it. What and issue was, number is it on right now? Thirty nine is the last one that came out. Thirty nine. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So, I'm on twenty seven, so I'm almost there. Oh yeah, dude, and and you need to message me when you get caught up too. <laughs> so, so, man, okay, so where I'm at right now, like one of the best, one of the be like, some of the best writing is the dialogue, right? The dialogue between whoever it doesn't even matter. There's not a single boring character in here. Even Dario Agar is like more tolerable now because like his dialogue is awesome. Like when he made that Minotaur labyrinth metaphor, <laughs> it was dope, dude. <laughs> like, yeah. it was just oh. dope. Al Ewing is a fucking great writer. I think he's one of the most underrated art uh, writers in comics right now. I think yeah. that, like, yeah, there was so much hype around this Immortal Hulk run. It, it started from the beginning, like I said. That's why I sold my first issue, and then I ended up getting the first trade and the second is, trade. Is issue one still hot right now? It's still worth some money, yeah. First right, printing? Cool. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> and um, I so think that like, was, like, one of the last comics I bought from Collector's Paradise, now that I'm thinking about it. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, but yeah. so, like... So I had the first two trades, and then I'm like, fuck, dude, I don't want to wait for the trades anymore. And I got this – I did what I normally don't do. And I got – I started getting the single issues. I normally <laughs> will not do that because I hate that in my collection, right? So yeah. I constantly have a battle of like, okay, you know what? Maybe I'll just take Immortal Hulk off my pull 
and I'll just <laughs> I'll just wait, you know? I'll just read it. <laughs> and then I read the new issue. Every time it comes out, I'm like, how can I cancel this? Like, how could I not <laughs> have this on my pull? It's like my favorite book that comes out that week, for the most part. There's only a couple times where it's, there's something else that came out that I like more, but... I, I, I can't believe I waited it out this long. <laughs> like, I can't. It is crazy. Yeah. And just when you think that, like, they're not going to fucking shock you with, like, some crazy visuals, they, they keep on doing it. And the character designs in this, you want to talk about character design, how we were talking about Daredevil and pants? <laughs> Freaking every single monster on here looks so unique. Like, mm-hmm. the new Abomination, crazy. <laughs> like, yeah. He doesn't look like a fish anymore. Or, like, he doesn't look, you know, you know he, what he reminded me of every time I saw him and I got him confused all the time? The only difference between them, how I differentiated him, was the fact that Abomination doesn't wear clothes. He looks like Chode from the Star Jammers. <laughs> <laughs> he does. He looks yeah. like Chode. That's also a horrible name, too. Chode. Yeah, I know. That's why, that's why I laughed. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. yeah. He looks I, just like him. And, like, you know, Chode has clothes on and Abomination is big and naked. But yeah, the, the new Abomination, though, that is some excellent design. Especially, like, the whole Rick Jones part of it. That was mm-hmm. nuts, dude. Oh, yeah. And I love the fucking the transformation scenes of the yep. way he transforms in. And, like, the reason it's called Immortal Hulk, in case uh, anybody listening doesn't know, is that he can't die. He discovers like that, like, even if he gets shot as Bruce Banner, he comes back as Hulk at night. Like and they and they really play into that whole thing, especially in the beginning. I don't think they do it as much in, um, as the series goes on. But Hulk only comes out at night. He doesn't come out during the day. He's really more in the shadows and and he's just like very dark. He does he talks normal. He doesn't talk like oh Hulk smash. Like he has the intelligence aspect and he's just creepy as fuck. But I, this it's is crazy how version. smart he is. Like, yeah, it's my I favorite like, version of the Hulk. Hands like, up. yeah, like uh, the fact that he's not yelling, I feel like makes him more scary. The fact that he's very, like, he's very articulate and very well calculated, and yeah. he stares at you. Like the, the the art in here is like it's very alive. That's like the best way I could describe it. It's very alive. It's very even even the the, the body porn the, the body porn the body horror stuff. <laughs> <in it. laughs> the body. <laughs> Body porn. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking yeah, body, body porn. porn. Yeah. Body, body porn. horror. Body yeah. horror. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The body horror is just, it's crazy. Like you said, the transformation stuff. Oh, like when, when he fights the abomination, the general, Tordine. Uh, yeah, Tordine. And he, he like, uh, he fights him as the abomination. And like when he does that, that acid vomit spit where it like melts off skin, how he freaking tore off the affected skin and just threw it at a soldier and the soldier just melted crazy <laughs> like even 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 me describing it it's like it, I, I probably feel i feel like i sound like a seven-year-old describing to you his first horror movie <laughs> i mean it's because like when, when have you ever seen this in a marvel comic book never 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 like and, and i honestly i think the only thing that i've ever seen stuff so grotesque or horrific it would be in like a junji ito book yeah yeah and yeah, yeah. i think that like Hey, dude, testament to Marvel, dude, is they're letting, you know, they're letting Al Ewing and Joe Bennett tell their fucking story. They are letting them go, and it gets crazy as fuck throughout the run. Even just the six volumes you've read, I mean, and it's just so out there, and it's so unlike anything, and it's uh, anything else from Marvel, and it's separated. It's not connecting to any any, any events. They make mention of certain events. Like, they they mentioned Krakoa. They just recently mentioned Krakoa. Obviously, the X Men are. Hickman I mean, they're is currently right. existing. You know, right? I mean, they're there, but they're not. It's. I'm saying it's like it's not being affected by much. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's it's, it's having its room to breathe, unlike you know other books where they get looped into a tie in every fucking other event. You know? Yeah. I feel like Immortal Hulk really isn't tying into anything. There hasn't been like an Immortal Hulk like X of Swords or Immortal Hulk Empire or Immortal Hulk. Uh, what's the event happening right now? Uh, no, just Empire. Yeah. So no, no, there was there wasn't an Immortal Hulk Empire, right? I think there was an Absolute Carnage Immortal Hulk tie-in, but even that tie-in that makes sense. That makes sense. But even that tie-in, like, <laughs> it didn't even really feel like it was tie. Like you could have not read any of Absolute Carnage, 
and it would have made sense for the Immortal Hulk run, you know? Nice. Okay, yeah. cool. See? Can't wait to get to that. But yeah, like, these these two people need to freaking give Marvel a chance. <laughs> like, is, this is... You know what's so special about it? Is that the fact that you know it's gonna, it's you know, that you're like list, like literally reading like a classic in the making in the making, and that's two titles. That's Daredevil and Immortal Hulk. That is two titles that's like that feels like you're you're being you're a part of something special, of part of a, of a classic tale that's happening. It must be what people felt like when they read freaking Frank Miller's Daredevil back in like '94. You know what I mean? Yeah, and and that's and that's why I've been saying like, dude, I'm like I lean I'm leaning more towards Marvel. I, I mean, I don't really have much DC on my poll. Mm -hmm. I think I have a couple books, mostly Marvel stuff and and then the indie stuff. But it's books like these that make me such a huge fan of what Marvel's doing right Absolutely. now. And, and I think that they, for the most part, mostly Daredevil, has like these long runs with, with great creators. But every once in a while, you get a book like Immortal Hulk where it's just so good that you can't help... It doesn't give you a reason to ever want to jump off. And I think it's supposed to end at issue 50. That's what the artist said. I'm mm. not sure if that's still the plan or, or what's going to happen. But with still, 50 issues is a lot. That's a solid yeah. run right there. Yeah. There's some series that don't even make it past freaking 10. There's some that don't even make it past 6. Yeah, and they get exactly. canceled. Those are Just fucking fantastic awesome. writing, dude. I'm glad you jumped on board. And I hope anybody listening gives those books a shot. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. I really didn't expect to like Immortal Hulk as much as I did. Daredevil, I, I kind of knew what I was getting into. You know, you, you expect stuff from that. But, like, as far as Hulk goes, like, like Ryan and I said, like, we probably read two Hulk stories, but like, four Hulk stories. Like, no, two Hulk stories between us. Yeah. And it's crazy. It's crazy how insanely good this is. Like, I, I, I describe it to people at work who, uh, who, are, who are nerds like us. And they're like, oh, man, yeah, I've been hearing good stuff about it. But, man, the way you describe it, yeah, I might have to check it out. I'm like, hell, yeah. Fuck yeah. Do that shit. You're gonna fucking love it. It's like it feels it's, old Hollywood, dude. Like even the way even the way like you know, the, the 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 lighting. Even the fact the, especially the fact that Alex Ross is basically doing all the covers. He has, he's done every cover. Yeah, and they've been phenomenal. Like they, they look like old movie freaking posters from the seventies and eighties mm -hmm. and sixties. Like it, it, it's just Oh man, I don't know, man. I, I I can't say enough good things about this one. I know it's got it all, bro. It's got it all. It does. It does. All right. Well, um, shit. Let's <laughs> let's talk saga. All righty. Anybody that doesn't know, this is written by Brian K. Vaughn, Fiona Staples on art and phonographics on lettering and design. I'll start off. This is. I don't even know how many times I've read this volume. I think yeah. you said. I think you said it might be your seventh. I, I probably didn't even need to read it before we recorded. <laughs> but you did. <laughs> but I, yeah, but I did because like any excuse to read this book, I'll take it. And I don't really need an excuse because it's amazing. It's one of the best series that has come out S since this book came out. It's it is the best series that has come out. I think. Yeah. Consistently, was all it's always good. There's never a bad issue. Brian K. Vaughn was already one of my favorite writers. Before this book came out, yeah. mostly because of Why the Last Man, which is one of my all-time favorite series, mm -hmm. and his work on Ex Machina. He did some stuff with Mystique at Marvel. He did The Runaways at Marvel. So it was a no-brainer when Saga came out that I was going to pick this book up. I picked it up off the stands, but there was a period of my life that I've mentioned quite a few times on here where I could not buy comics because I was in a building that did not allow me to leave. So nice. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I made sure when I got out of that building to pick back up with Saga. But I was I think it was already on volume two or three. It's just it's great. I've said this many times about other stuff like about getting a new experience when you read when you read something after you've already read it. Right. Yeah. And this time I, I didn't get a new experience. This time I, I was just reading it purely for to enjoy it because I knew we were going to talk about it. But when I reread the compendium, I think I read it in a day and a half. I, I, I couldn't put it down. Smash. <laughs> and, and I got a different experience because at the heart of this book, it's about parenting. And, yeah. you know, just for anybody that doesn't know about Saga, it's about a man and a woman from two different races and they're at war with one another. Or they're, they're like racist. Literally different yeah. races. Uh, yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, like Alana, the the female character, you know, she has wings on her back, and Marco has fucking horns coming out of his head, right? And goat ears. Yeah, and goat ears. <laughs> <laughs> he, he basically looks like a human ram, almost, I guess you could say, right? And he's a prisoner, and she is his jailer, and they end up falling in love, and they have a baby. The powers that be, you know, namely the higher-ups of their races, aren't having it. They send people out to kill them. But yep. along the way, they have, you know, they ha- they do have that child together, and nobody can believe it. They basically think this is an abomination, and they set out to kill them. Yeah. That, now, when I first read it, I was purely reading it for the story, right? I, you know, the, oh, this is a cool aspect of, like, you know, two different races, and they come together, and they fall in love, and now they're on the run, and we meet all these cool side characters, which, by the way, Brian K. Vaughn, the way he fleshed out this fucking world in six issues, it's phenomenal. It's a, it, this is an excellent first volume. All right. Um, well, ahead, but like I, yeah, but like I said, so when I did read that again, right, I wasn't a parent when it first came out. Being a no. parent now, you know, when I read the compendium, about, it was about a year and a half ago, and it's amazing how much more I related to the overall story. I don't want to say just this first volume, but the entire nine-volume series up to now of just – you're doing whatever you can to protect your kid, right? Only wanting the best for your kid. And and just so so much of that. It's just it's amazing because Brian K. Vaughn even said it at that signing that I went to that he was putting a lot of himself in the in this, right? And his fears or whatever as a parent or his experiences of being a new parent when he started writing this and how he put that in there. It's easy to see, especially being able to identify it with, you know, even though it's a larger than life scenario that th- these characters are in. You can find those small moments and easily this, relate. It's all small moments. Like, everything about, okay, the, 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 the big story, like, the whole war and them being chased, that's all well and good. But, like, well, like you said, like, this is something that will forever resonate with me that you said it's, it's a small moment. This, throughout this entire run, through all, like, the whole arc, like, when Hazel, <laughs> we're not going to ruin it, right? Like, I, don't, I shouldn't care, right? <laughs> what? I well, just care about spoilers. Don't go past volume one, just in case. <sighs> okay. I mean, shit. When you first open, when you first open <laughs> the book, let's talk about that. Have, yeah. It's immediately childbirth. Yeah. It's immediately childbirth. And what, and, the, the first thing that comes out of her mouth, am I shitting? It feels like I'm shitting. <laughs> I mean, you know what I mean? That's like a that, hell of a way to the, set the tone for, for the whole book. book. Yeah. <laughs> like, and that's probably one of the more milder moments of the book, too. Yeah. Okay, so when they, when they uh, when they talk about when when they, when uh, Marco is uh, biting the umbilical cord, yeah. right? And uh, they get they get into the talk about uh, like uh, Alana wants to do the wing bleeding, where I get basically I think they just clip the wings so they can't fly or whatever. And then they get into like a little baby argument where it's like you said when we started this, no politics, no history, no more barbaric religious nonsense. I feel like that that's, that's such a forward thinking conversation to have because i feel like more and more parents have have these conversations now you know because like i know like there's there's guys out there that's like no we're not getting my son circumcised and then girls will, and then you know uh significant others they they, they you know they, they get into arguments like this and this is such a like a, such a crazily eerily real you know what i mean and like you said he, if he put a lot of his himself and him being a father into this like obviously that's a conversation that that, that he's probably had you know what i mean and i love that that's yeah so many little moments, dude. I mean, and Fiona Staples' art. This is my intro to her art as well. And we mm, have. Same, to, I, I don't want to go too far talking saga without talking about her amazing, amazing art, dude. First of all, like talking about the opening pages, dude. Like the emotion that you see in these faces and the characters. I mean, th- one of my favorite pages too is the page where Marco's holding Hazel, mm-hmm. their daughter, and tears are coming down his face. And yeah. The powerful images that she's able to capture, and like we said, the small moments that she's able to capture as well, the action, she's got such a wide range of capabilities that that come across in just this short volume. I, I love her pages where she's uh, showing space and the, yeah. and stuff like that. You know, there's a scene too, like one that I really like is when Marco loses it. This is later in the volume. Because yeah. a lot, Alana gets shot, and you just see the fucking 
rage. His literally his eyes change and he gets like the dark circles under his eyes and he goes into like a Wolverine Berserker rage. Yeah. And it's fucking amazing. And like just the way she was able to do that subtle change under his eye that if you don't really look at it, you could you could completely miss it. But it's that subtle change to show that he just like flipped the switch. He's seeing red, dude. He's gonna fucking kill every motherfucker in sight to protect his family. The, the crazy range of emotion was like prevalent throughout this like whole book. As far as like as far as like the writing and the art and um it's just so much raw emotion that goes into both. There's a lot of raw emotion. Like, yeah, there's a war going on, but it's the emotion that freaking pushes this whole story through. It's just so good. Everything about it. Dude. And these fucking character designs. I mean, well, the stock, bro. The stock. I know. I'm looking at her right now. Dude. I mean, <laughs> the stock. Yeah. I mean, like, fucking, all you see is a fucking torso with no clothing, spider eyes, and then underneath that dress is all the spider legs. Spider yeah. female hybrid. I love the will. The will is one of my favorite characters in the book. His ups and downs throughout the course yeah. of this has been great. Yeah, just like he's almost like a John Carter that's just been shit all over. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> I, I, I don't know how else to describe him. Literally just take John Carter, shit all over him, and that's what you have with the will. They're basically um hired assassins. The freelancers. Yeah, freelancers, right. So then you have Isabel, who's – and she's part of these, like, ghosts that are on the planet Cleave, which is where they are trying to escape from. I love Isabel's character as well. Like, throughout this whole first arc is them trying to get off of this planet, get away mm -hmm. from everybody hunting them. So they're going to the rocket ship forest, which, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it sounds so corny, but it ends up being so fucking cool of an idea, yeah. right? And as they're going – like, people are, like, fear this area because there's, like, oh, there's these red red goat, red monsters that will fucking slaughter you. And da -da -da. and really, it's just ghosts. And it's on the planet Cleave when people die. That's what happens is they turn into these ghosts and they're bound to the planet. And they can't Which leave. such a crazy idea for a ghost. And yeah. so well explained. And like, it's not just, like, oh, like, you know, something happened to this person. It's like, no, you just fucking... Died and you're bound to the planet and now you're a ghost so yeah boom you just appear at night you don't come out during the day right yeah i mean we really get introduced to so many characters and not in a way that feels overwhelming at all never does it feel overwhelming where you're like man there's too much going on it's too hard to follow all this i mean you got robot yeah you know robot I mean? robot, robot, robot the f yeah oh my god the, the fourth. fourth yeah <laughs> i mean he is such a piece of shit but what ha you know i and i don't want to ruin it but Eventually, he becomes less of a piece of shit. I, I, I guess you could say, I, right? I, I like his quips later on. His quips, yeah, kind of, kind of keep 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 the conversation trucking. I, I love it. Yeah, and his <laughs> head, and, and his head, and his entire race are literally just fucking TV screens. That's their face. Is it fucking TV? It's screen a TV. Cool? Yeah, with rabbit ear <laughs> antennas. And I love how you'll see random shit pop up on the screen, like throughout the series, right? Like, yeah, that's some of the funnier moments. Is because he, he can't control it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Can't control it. It's just the funniest shit. And like, look, like, let, let's back up for a second. They're literally gray people with fucking TV heads on. <laughs> like, it's so simple but, and so stupid. If I were, you know, as we're saying it, it sounds stupid, but it's so great. Yeah, it's fantastic. I mean, Lion Cat. That's oh, another dude. great freaking character. One of, one of the best characters of the book. All the cat does is either keeps quiet. Or says lying. When someone's lying around When him. someone's lying. <laughs> it's always so well-timed. He'll say it at such great moments. There's a moment later in one of the later volumes where he, he, he him and Hazel have, have a small moment, but it's one of the best moments. I but know, yeah, so, like... Fuck, it is so hard not to fucking, like, spoil shit. It's so it hard is. not to it talk really about is. other stuff. It really is. I didn't and, think it was going to be when we decided to do this, you know? I didn't realize it was going to be so hard. It's because we get excited. Yeah. We get excited, and then sometimes we go beyond the story. Like, I literally have the book open right now, and I'm skimming through it to make sure when I mention something, I don't mention too much. And it's crazy. Like, it's like, you know, there's, there's insane moments of violence in it. Like, insane moments of violence. But yet, 
such, it's such a contrast from like the vibrant colors that they use. Everything is so bright. All our heroes are all our heroes. The, the heroes, Alana and Marco, like for the most part, their character design is all like some basic, ba- like the very mute colors. Like you know what I mean. But then right. like you have you have robot robot uh, robot the fourth, where he's like in a ba- in a powder blue royal garb with like a green and purple sash. And then you have the Will, who's literally wearing an almost turquoise cape. <laughs> like yeah. hearing it coming out coming out of my mouth. Like if uh, if I've never like read saga and i heard myself talking i heard someone like me describing it the way i'm describing it i would not be interested in it actually um when i started reading it it was already in volume six i was once oh wow okay dylan was late to the party right but i was at collector's paradise i was like i'm gonna pick up a trade today i picked up saga and i asked i think it was kevin about saga and then he was like, oh, yeah, it's great, man. You, you're like, it's a good, it's, it's, I remember he was like, I can't describe it to you because you'll think it's weird, but it's not. Just read it. Hearing myself talk about it now, hell yeah, it's super weird. <laughs> but it's, it's, it's a very, so freaking good. It's, and that's why, like, I, I tend to stop myself when describing it. Because I, I don't just describe, well, I guess, yeah, I guess mostly I am describing just the first volume because I don't want to spoil anything, but. I keep it very simple. It's usually yeah. like two sentences. So that's why it is kind of hard to describe it as you and I are talking. And that's kind of – that's why I, I'm flipping through it too to kind of like just talk about certain moments, you know. But to describe it – I mean there's a fucking planet called Sextillion. And that is one of the – It's a horror planet. Yeah. It's literally – I didn't say horror. I said whore. Right. Whore. All it, sorts of horrors. Male, yeah. female, animals is weird. And that page, dude, <laughs> that page when that fucking door opens up. Right, and that little girl fucking looks up at the will. Uh, oh, that's what you're talking about. Ooh, yeah, yeah. That and shit. That shit. Holy me. shit, dude. Yeah, I did not like that fucking shit at all, dude. But it was supposed to make you feel uncomfortable. Like, know. you know what I mean? It, it made me feel uncomfortable in a good way because I, I instantly knew what was about to fucking happen, even yeah. when I first read it. Because I'm like, oh, this fool, the will. He, he didn't have that. He, shit. he doesn't play this shit. You don't play that shit, no. You're like, like the will is definitely one of the better characters. There's not, I mean, I don't, I honestly don't think there's a single bad, badly written character in this. No, uh, some have, right. some are obviously better than others, and in even in certain volumes, like some, uh, what do you call? Some take uh, take the forefront uh, over others. Like you know, one will have will be about Marco, one will, uh, and then another one will be about Lana, and then later on we'll talk about Robot, and later on we'll talk about Hazel. Like you know what I mean? I love Hazel, dude. I mean, <laughs> I love Hazel, and I really become attached to Marco's mom too. I she ends up becoming one of my favorite characters as this yeah. goes on. Yeah, as well. yeah, yeah. And and I'm not really teasing anything because at the end of this volume is after they board their fucking wooden rocket ship, um, <laughs> which by the way is such a dope design. It's such an interesting concept of like when when they get on, they have to sacrifice something, and yeah. Marco sacrifices his his family heirloom which is his sword that he just yeah. like i said earlier he fucking slaughtered all these fucking people that were coming after after him. after taking a vow of never unsheathing it he ba- yeah he he vowed he, that he would he, he basically becomes a pacifist like because yeah, he's he, about to be a dad even though he's a fucking crazy ass warrior which we get yeah. a glimpse of and because he did that and then they're on this ship that's how marco's parents end up finding him and that's why they're on the ship at the end. But I, the ship, like, and I love that when they're on there too. They're like, oh, you, or Isabel tells them, oh, you don't tell the ship where to go. The ship decides where it's going to plant its roots. And that's yeah. like, it's just such a weird concept. But like, and again, like, there's nothing like overly complicated about any of these ideas that we're being presented with. It's but the they're all very interesting. Yeah. It's, it's the presentation very... where it's just like, one, it's beautiful. Yeah. Uh, two, Everything, everything doesn't feel as ridiculous as it sounds. I know it sounds <laughs> exactly like it doesn't feel as ridiculous as it sounds. Like that's like the best way I could do it. Like, excuse me for being like you know for making it sound like way more hype than it is, but it's, I don't know. But just read it. <laughs> like if you haven't read it, read it. Yeah, I don't. I mean, I I really I can't say much else other than that. Yeah, I mean it's it is one. There's a reason why this book is on everybody's listen for their top favorite series and when i say everybody i mean a majority of comic book fans love this fucking book at our shop uh at collector's paradise like under certain books we have like there's like little no cards for picks right and it'll have the person's name on there for saga it says universal pick 
And it's the only book that says that in the shop. That's and, crazy. Yeah. And I mean, literally, it's like all you have to write is just trust us on there. I, don't, <laughs> I mean, it doesn't say that, but it should because it really is. It's I, I haven't met anybody that doesn't like it. I think there's one person that I know doesn't exactly love it. I, I'm not going to call them out. I'll tell you after we... Oh, you got to tell me afterwards. Yeah, I'll tell you Is after. it someone we know? Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. For the most part, everybody reads it. They love it. They become addicted to it. And they end up coming back, like, within a day or two after picking up the first volume. And I literally went in week after week and got a different volume every week for yeah. six weeks straight. It's one of the best series that Image has ever produced. I mean, it, there's a reason why... Sales for Image and their percentage of the marketplace has taken a little bit of a dip. And it's not because their books suck or because Boom is coming after them. No, it's because they lost Walking Dead and they yep. lost Saga. So when you lose two of the highest selling books, obviously your numbers are going to dip. But mark my words, when Saga comes back, Image is going to fucking take their percentage right back from Boom. And that's not a slight against Boom. You know, it's just that... Right now, there's no, like, clear-cut image book, right, that's really... that That's universally loved by everyone? Exactly. You know, so if you haven't read it, please, go pick it up. I, I'm sure that most of you listening probably have already read it. But And if you have read it, read other works by Brian K. Vaughn. Yes. I suggest Paper Girls. Just I, saying. I second Paper Girls. I would say Why the Last Man. I think that might be my favorite of his work. I like Paper Girls better than I like Stranger Things. Yeah, I mean, so do I. I did one season of Stranger Things, but I did a whole ass freaking run of Paper Girls. I know. I only did one season of Stranger Things, too. I tried season two, and it's like, I'm like, you know what? As I was watching, I'm like, I'll just go read an issue of Paper Girls. That's because awesome. it's Because it's better. So Yeah. And um, uh, with Paper Girls, I was actually, I actually wasn't that late. I, I think I, I think Paper Girls, I came in at like. Yeah, you were pretty. Early. Yeah, I, I, was pretty, I was pretty on time. But yeah, like freaking, I, I, it makes me wonder, like. How much more Brian K. Vaughn has, has in him? Because let, let, let's read off like all the stuff we just said. Why the Last Man I haven't read yet? Apologies. I know. It's gonna, it's, we're, we're, we're covering it in a future episode. But Why the Last Man? Praises all across the board. Paper Girls. Praises all across the board. Friggin' Saga. Universal. Mm -hmm. All across the board. And like, I just wonder like, if he has anything planned, if, he, if there's some more coming out. Like, I'm just so curious, you know? Yeah, I mean, I want more Saga, first of all. He said that they're just trying to stack them up, I guess, so that, that it's on time. But yeah, I mean, there's plenty of other stuff. I don't know if you've read Doctor Strange, The Oath. No, but I will now. Yeah, so that's by, that's a great Doctor Strange book by with Marcos Martin on art. Ex Machina, like I was saying, that's in compendiums. I think there's one compendium. I think that collects all of it. I could be wrong. I'm pretty sure it is one. So there's that. Why the Last Man, obviously, like we talked does, about. Does, does a lot of his uh, story tend to revolve around sort of a sci-fi theme with it? Which one? Like, any, all of them. Because, like, the, the, I mean, the two that I've, like, fully read is Paper Girls and Saga. Like, you know, sci-fi, both of them. Easily. And Why the Last Man, I, ha I know nothing about it. I wouldn't call that sci-fi. Okay, cool. See, that's, uh, that's what I was asking. If there's like more, yeah. if he has like a kind of sci-fi tone to his writing. No, and then Ex Machina, I guess, kind of has a hint of sci-fi, but a lot of political stuff. Okay. Yeah, I mean, he's just, he's an amazing writer. And while I really want to see Saga finish, I am also excited to see, like, is he going to do something else as well? Because he was writing Paper Girls and Saga at the same time. So I heard I, I I heard that he was taking a break from Saga because he was penning a script to a Gundam movie. You know, giant robot Gundam. I know, I know, but yeah, that's why I don't have any Brian K. Vaughn comics right now. Yeah, for Gundam. Did God you, damn did it! You not watch Gun did, did you not watch Gundam Wing? Dude, oh. watch that shit. You want to talk okay. about fucking dope ass anime? Gundam Wing, bro. Okay, I, I that's on my list now. <laughs> Um, yeah, Gundam yeah. Wing is that. That is. It's not as good as good as as uh, Evangelion, but it's good. Okay, I'll check it out for sure. But yes, Saga, <laughs> great, Universal. Everybody read it if you haven't. I'm sure you have. Uh, nothing. Actually, else while we're while we're talking about Saga, um, I'm drawing a picture of Alana and Marco. All my Inktober stuff. I decided I'm just gonna finish it. I'll like you know, finish the list. And yeah. I figured if I was going to draw Marco, I might as well draw Alana, too. So I drew both of them. 
Am I and the one that I said will... Marco to you? I yeah, am, right? you are the one that said Marco. You know, it's fitting that as we're talking about it, I'm over here freaking doing the filling in the blacks right now. Oh, nice. Please send me a picture when we're when you're done tonight. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm 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 doing Alana's pants right now. Nice. Alana Alana's leggings. Like I love the wardrobe. Like everyone yeah. just looks so normal. Like like normal people. Then you go to like the military and they all look like like the putty patrol. <laughs> they do. They do. Like, you yeah. know what I mean? It's, it's, it's great, dude. I love it. I love it so hard. Oh. It's <laughs> yeah. Uh, before yeah. we get out of here, do you want to talk about maybe what uh, we're excited for this week? Well, first off, let me just say what I'm I'm got coming. Out. I got Amazing Spider-Man, and then wait, first... stop. I'm what? sorry. I, my my list just popped up for this week for this past, previous Wednesday. Before you before we get into what we were talking about, what did you think of crossover? Um. It has potential. Ah, okay. Acceptable. Okay. Not, not everything you say is acceptable. That was worded poorly, but okay. It's cool. Look, I don't want to say it was not bad by any means. Right. I just wasn't blown away. I like the concept, but I, this is a wait and see for me. I'd rather I'll answer that at the end of the first arc. Because, like, okay. let's see how much he's allowed to get away with first. And exactly. then I'll see if it's good. Exactly. Especially with that last picture, with that last page. Yeah. I want to know who it is. Look, until I see that happen in the comic book, then this is all really just a, na- a nice idea, quote unquote. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, that, yeah, that's okay. how I feel. Okay. So it's not that I, like, again, I don't think it's bad. I just want to see what characters he's going to actually have in this book because he's heralding it as a crossover amongst publishers that are going to be in this book and i'll I'll believe when i see it is what i'm saying the art phenomenal and i love the main character but the comic book store scene that was unrealistic it's just that's not that's not a comic book store that's that's not what goes on it looks like a record shop yeah that's it just (laughs) it didn't feel it didn't feel natural as a comic book store I don't know what comic store he worked at or he frequented, but, you know, look, I, I want it to be good. I want it to be successful, even though I talk a lot of shit about his, like, how he feeds the speculator stuff. But oh, Donald. This book, yeah, Donald Cates. But I do want to like crossover because I, I, the concept is cool. I love Jeff Shaw's art. I heard, uh, what's Michael Arred's character? Madman is going to be in this. I mean, he mentions Savage Dragon in passing. He yeah. He alludes to certain characters, but, like, let, let let me see you have a DC or Marvel character is what I'm saying. Yeah, I know, let's, see, let's see you pull out okay? some big guns. Yeah. Right. I know he could have a creator-owned character. That's easy. Yeah. All you have to do is ask, you know, like these, It's you're asking one person, you're not asking a corporation. So right. when I see like a fucking Superman or a fucking Spider-Man or Batman swinging through there, then I'll be like, oh shit, Donny Cates did that. Okay. But until then... I, I'm I'm a little uh, hesitant to give like a, a actual opinion on it, you know. Okay. Yeah. No, I, I I totally respect that because I I actually had the same conversation. I honestly don't think he, it's the person who we saw on the last page is not going to be who we think it is. Yeah, I don't it's think it's going to so. be something. It's going to be something stupid. And that's <laughs> and if it is, like, look, the only way this book is a home run is if it is that character. Because yeah. if it's not that fucking character, then this is pointless. And your fucking whole book is... It's a lie. It's a lie. It's a fucking lie. And it was just a fucking gimmick. And then you're exactly who I said you were. And somebody that just feeds speculators. You know? Oh, Donald. And I I hope he's not. I hope he's not. Let me talk about something I am not going to (laughs) back. I'm very excited for another new Hellboy comic that's coming out this week. Nice. Uh, I've been waiting for this since... Oh, fuck. Since December of last year when it was originally supposed to come. (laughs) So... I've since before waiting. since before December. Yeah, I think maybe even November. I think yeah. it was November when this um, was originally solicited, actually. You're right, so it's a year. So I'm very excited for it to come out. New issue of American Vampire, new Ninja Turtles. And there's one comic book that, I'll be honest with you, it's almost kind of like a guilty pleasure comic, but it's that it's that metal tie-in, the Extreme. Oh, issue. Infinite Hour Extreme? Because yeah. it's got Lobo, dude. And yeah, dude. That's, that's I just will gonna buy be the any most comic metal. Book. Yeah, <laughs> it's gonna be the most metal issue ever. Yeah, I'll buy any comic with Lobo in it, bro. So yeah, the main man. Yeah, dude. Oh damn, uh, I love Lobo. Lobo, yeah. Lobo was Deadpool before Deadpool was Deadpool. Agreed. Like people don't know that people people sleep on Lobo. 
They do. And like, you know, especially with like with like especially if you get into the older stuff, the Sam Keith goat fucking edition Lobo. Like <laughs> Are you talking about the, are you talking about the Simon Bisley? Oh yeah, Simon Bisley. Sorry, my bad. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah. Good. Simon Bisley. Hey, I, I have a suggestion real quick. What's up? We should fucking do an episode the, on the first Lobo miniseries. Oh yeah, would, I'm, I'm that, down. I'm down. I talk the main. I talk about the main man. Yeah, I, I don't have the trade, but I have the singles. I, I can get the singles. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, I mean they're, have, they're very cheap. So yeah, <laughs> they're not. And they're it not sucks. Support. And it sucks. You want to talk about a property that that freaking like you know? You, I, I'm always saying this. They, there's just so much untapped property that DC has that they can freaking utilize, and they can. And I feel like they could be a success. Lobo. Lobo would be such a good success. So, like, especially, like, I loved Lobo ever since I freaking first, the first time I ever heard of Lobo, it was, like, one of the, it was, like, an episode of Superman. Back yes, was, I like, remember that five, one. Yes. And he, and yes. he, he kind of just shows up out of nowhere. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That was <laughs> such a great episode, dude. I love yeah. that episode, dude. Oh, yeah, my and God. Then, they're, like, they're, like, arguing on the moon. Like, <laughs> dude, that was so good. I mean, a black label Lobo book. Imagine the possibilities. But if you do it, you like, and the thing is, like, Lobo, Lobo is like the king of miniseries. There's so many Lobo miniseries mm-hmm. that, like, a black label, a black label only seems fitting. Because, like, like I, I got them over quarantine. I mean, I know, I, I, I'm pretty sure I took pictures on, on Instagram every time I'd get some, like, I, I was ordering a bunch of shit. So every week I would take like, a new picture. And yeah. I got the first Lobo miniseries and I got the second one. And reading it, I'm like, fuck. Like, this is kind of like, crazy that they were getting away with some of this shit yeah, dude. back then you know what i mean like and it was approved by the comics code authority too so and it was dc yeah it was it was they're really good comics i, I mean they're definitely a product of the time but i would fucking absolutely love to do an episode talking about lobo dude okay we'll push we'll push we'll, we'll push for that soon because you got me excited over fucking lobo oh good <laughs> You can move anything you want out of that list. I don't care. Fucking bass stitches. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, dude. I'm going to go fucking frag somebody right now. Fucking frags. <laughs> frag off. Yes. Yes. <laughs> like, oh, he was literally... Okay, see, he's an alien, so he's literally cursing. But to us, it just sounds weird. <laughs> yeah. I know. It's it's just such a brilliant character, dude. Oh, my That's God. That's how it. you do it. Any, uh, sure. what, are, what are you uh, looking forward to this week, though? Uh, Seven Secrets. Oh, yes. I, I'm waiting. I'm trade waiting that. I like it so far. I've said this. I don't know. I said, I'm, maybe I've said it to you, but the art reminds me of Udon. The yes, interior you did art. tell me that. Yeah. You know, the interior art is very Udon esque. Yeah, but like Seven Secrets, like for this being Tom, like a, a Tom Taylor, like little, a, a baby, like an original baby, mm-hmm. like I, I feel that he's doing a great job. Right now, he's making the characters feel lovable, but I know Tom Taylor. And he's about to kill someone. He's about to kill somebody. Yeah. Or a lot of bodies. <laughs> <laughs> like i don't know like it's, i don't know where it's going what else am i excited for like i just keep on seeing all these freaking x of swords comics are coming out and i'm just like man i'm so glad i'm not fucking <laughs> you're not even reading them are you um, i'm not i'm not reading them i'm not they're so i don't want to I, I know they're good like I, I'm, I'm actually really excited for to read it as a whole yeah but i just can't do it to myself i don't blame you i feel like now i'm well now i'm halfway through so mm. part of me is reading it because I want to read it, but also so that I don't want it to get spoiled. I work in a shop where stuff gets spoiled, so um, not by <laughs> not by Nick. I also want to hear stuff. Yeah, and I, I want to be able to talk about it with customers because, like, I, I know you work at a shop too, but like I, I'm there like all day long. You yeah. know what I mean? So like that. I mean that's like my main job. So mm-hmm. it's so easy to hear somebody just spoil something in yeah. the shop, and so like I try to make sure I read. Everything that I care about not getting spoiled, I read. So I read a lot of fucking comic books every week. Even though my pull list is not high, my stack that I bring home of books is pretty substantial. Ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> substantial. It's a substantial amount. Yeah, it's, it's substantial, dude. I mean, and, and then look at my Goodreads, and then you'll see how much trades I'm reading in a week. And it's, yeah. it's, it's insanity. It's you, should, insanity. You, guys, you, guys, you guys should look Ryan up on Goodreads. His reading challenge is fucking ridiculous. I'm, I'm I, over here. I, I barely broke 100 like a week ago or something. And Ryan broke like 200 like June. I, I, I'm at 316 right now. <laughs> fucking monster. 
<laughs> yeah, I know. It's, it's and that and like imagine if I put like the arcs of of actual comic books I'm reading. Like I could put X Men Volume One, X Men Volume Two, Marauders, vo- like all these. I could put those on there, but I don't. So like, think about that. Like, yeah, exactly. Fucking comic. This is just yeah. the trades or the novels I'm reading, which yeah. is mostly trade paperbacks. But yeah, it's 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 pretty nuts. Brian has read a substantial amount of comics and has an extensive knowledge of comics. Oh, I'm just gonna that. use every, yeah. every, every, every. I'm just gonna use big words, <laughs> so that way it like really emphasizes yes. how yes. much you read. Good, I like, I like that, dude. Yeah. Oh man, uh-huh. it's 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 like like seriously. When I see your 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 Goodreads feed, it's like so fun to me. It's like God damn, Ryan. I literally say it out loud. God <laughs> damn. <laughs> it's, it's it's crazy, dude. I mean, yeah, just alone last week what I read, Jesus. Since we last talked, I read Nailbiter Volume 7, Absolute nice. Swamp Thing Volume 2. Nice. Invincible Iron Man Volume 5, 6, and 7. The Flash, um, Dastardly Death of the Rogues, and Road to Flashpoint, which were the two volumes before Flashpoint. Wolverine yeah. by Jason Aaron Volume 4. Saga Volume 1. Oh, you know what I read? Gideon Falls Volume 1. Ooh. It's it's a good first arc. I wouldn't say it's great, but like I'm I'm eager to read the that's next some, following volume. That's something you should binge. Just suggestion before we get out of here. I, I don't want to go too deep into it. I want to hear your opinion more after you after you read a lot of it. Binge it I, because I, I, I like I like the direction. I like its tone. Mm-hmm. I like its feel. I like uh, the psychology of it. But then boom, it hits you with the supernatural. <laughs> it's, like, yeah, it's very it's been very hard. And then Nick was like, I was like, dude. Half the time, I don't know what the fuck is going on. I can't remember what I read last issue. It's like, it's just, but yet I don't take it off my list because like, I know it's good deep down. And he's like, you need to read it all at once. I caught up and he told me he caught up and read like 25 issues in a row. And he's like, if you read it together, it's really good. So that's what I recommend. It's about to end anyway. So, oh, okay. Yeah. It's got one issue left. Oh, wonderful. How many volumes is it? It'll be six when all is said and done. Okay. I think may, I, it's hard to tell because, like, I think volume five is the next one, but then mm-hmm. there's one issue left, and that last issue is 80 pages. I, it's almost like five and a half volumes, I guess. That's monstrous. Yeah. That's that's huge. Yeah. But no, like, uh, like I said, um, I mean, I'm, 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 I guess I'm eager because there's certain things that's just I don't even want to spoil it. But you know, you know, you know, you know the scene I'm talking about where the the pastor runs into the field and then he comes to and realizes what he finds in the field. <laughs> like, uh, like, kind of. That book's just very unnerving as you go through it. Yeah, the, uh, and also the art makes it it makes you feel vi- like uncomfortable at times and uneasy, and that's why I love it so much because it it, it literally I have a physical feeling when I'm reading that book where I'm just like, oh my god, you feel dirty, happening? right? Yeah, I'm like, what's happening right now? I, I should I be looking at this or no? It feels and, like watching Saw, but like. Yeah, but you know what I mean, like watching Saw, but like you're in like a public place, <laughs> like you're not like at the comfort of your own home, watching it at your own discretion. Mm-hmm. Like <laughs> it, it's a bit, yeah, you're, it, you're right. It, does, it is a very uneasy feel, but it's good. It's it good. Is. It's good. Yeah. I'm not like you know. I definitely like this better than I like Sweet Tooth. I can see that. Yeah, I can know? see that. But like I said, uh, with the with Sweet Tooth about to drop, I gotta read. Uh, I gotta finish Sweet Tooth. Also. I have to finish the second half of Deadly Class because Deadly Class 1991 is about to drop. I know. What the fuck? Like, I didn't even know that was happening. Neither did I. It's jumping in time. He's <laughs> oh, jumping. Yeah. It's in, nice. in the comic books, it was still in 19... I think it was in 89. It just hit 89 in the comics. Or yeah. the last issue that it was in. So, yeah, I'm See, excited. That's, that's awesome. I love that. It, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's fun. Just when I thought, like, the beginning of, of 2021 was going to be kind of whack for, for comics, like, this is actually pretty dope. Yeah, there's there's some good shit about to come out. I'm definitely yeah. excited for what's coming out. Um, Berserker, finally, you know, hopefully get a release date on that. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a lot of exciting stuff coming. That's all, and, and uh, that's all I got, unless you, uh, any last uh, things you want to share before we get out? No, 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 I'm good. All right, cool. And uh, the possibility of us probably going video next week, that would be cool. Yes, uh, I, I think we're going to start doing uh, – this will still be on the audio on Podbean and Spotify since all that stuff, but uh, we will have – at least for the people listening on YouTube, we will have it as video as well. Oh, I'll make sure to wear a shirt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll, do, I'll either do something with my fucking hair or put a fucking hat on because 
right now my hair's not fucking it's it's all over the place. Um shit, but yeah. Shit. <laughs> but anyways, if you're not already following us, make sure you follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at the Comic Lounge. You can find Dylan at the Dillbot on Instagram. And make sure you throw your comments or suggestions down below or email us the comic lounge pod at gmail.com. And make sure you hit the subscribe button so you're notified every time we put a new episode up. We're on YouTube, Podbean, Spotify, and iTunes. Anywhere you listen to podcasts, that's where we're at. And on that note, we're out. Later, buds.